We want to talk with you about the books that feed your imagination and the vices that spark your soul. We drink, we curse, we read things. Come sit by us. Expect no judgment, just good times. Welcome to Paper and Vices. Books reviewed, vices indulged. Mature content warning. I always know that I have to say something at this point and I never think of it. <laughs> I am Victoria Papers. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> and I am Lee Vices. And uh, this is Paper and Vices, where we talk about book shit and the tiny vices that get us through our week. Because, oh God, oh God, have you been an adult in the 2020s lately? <laughs> so much adulting. <laughs> like, they could just release the remix of Jesus Take the Wheel, and it would just be number one on all the charts forever. <laughs> Even Muslims and Jews are like, yeah, he was a prophet. We're fine with it. Let him yep. handle shit. Yep. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm good. Just, uh, yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm here. It's all, it's all good. So I'm doing pretty well, but I was doing better last Friday. Yeah. Because we were drunk <laughs> and looking at questionable art with the Valkyrie. And yes. <laughs> that, no, well, actually at this time we were drunk and listening to the world's worst DJ who had not gotten laid since 1987. <laughs> <laughs> dude straight up played do you believe believe by Cher followed by motherfucking duran duran and dude it was not the vibe because anywhere you go that is not the motherfucking vibe i wanted to look there were there was like a threesome of old ass money white people who think they live by the beach and probably have shell shaped sinks in their uh guest bathrooms mm. you know exactly the vibe she's yeah. wearing beige linen pants dancing to that shit and i almost wanted to look at the bartender and be like however fucking drunk they are get me from here to there yep <laughs> just bridge that fucking gap how and many more awful. drinks do you need to enjoy the music <laughs> yes <laughs> And of course I was drunk, so instead of just, like, listening to Believe by Cher, I had to word vomit half of behind the music about how that's the song that brought us auto-tune. <laughs> and Cher is a vampire. Good, good times. And then we had pretzels. And really, if you have alcohol and pretzels and good friends, you're fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's good. Yep. <laughs> it, was good. it was good. We just straight up brought our leftovers into this bar and we're like, you know what? Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Carbohydrates and booze. Yeah. I was like, oh, God, please don't kick us out as we're like, we like <laughs> set the table with our leftovers. <laughs> Just like eating. <laughs> I mean, if they had tried, I would have been like, you let the sad boy DJ in who has not had his pee pee touched since 1987. I'm keeping my pretzels <laughs> and my blood orange Manhattan, which is delicious, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> No paper straws. Okay, bye. <laughs> so anyway, I did end up getting to go down and visit Lee, and it was awesome, and good times were had. Mm -hmm. The kids all got along great, which was awesome. Still happy I moved out of Orlando. Like, I love you guys, but uh, I was driving along 50 near Mills, and I was like, no, no, I this is so <laughs> much concrete. It is. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I came back to North Carolina, which is yellow with tree jizz. <laughs> <sighs> Gets in your mouth. Like, <laughs> mask from walking in and out of the car. Whoa. <laughs> um, and then we did Disney with my husband's best friend and his husband and their wonderful little assistant dog who is this derpy wonderful lab that i kind of wanted to kidnap and take oh yeah disney was just super great i loved it i would like to go back there are so many things i didn't eat mm -hmm. i walked like 24 miles in three days no we walked 20 miles in three days and then like five miles the next day and i was just like it's probably part of the reason i'm in so much pain right now like yeah. my normal chronic pain plus <laughs> bitch your fat ass walk 20 miles in three days like what were your expectations here <laughs> but it was fantastic and i have one child who is 
when she is occupied and she's not like having an ADHD or autistic meltdown because her needs aren't met, she's pretty fucking chill. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't do everything she wanted to. We did not see a single fucking princess. What? Yeah, we didn't go by Fairy Tale Hall. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The only gotcha. princess dining was booked. We saw Belle in France at Epcot and we waved. But she's like, I want to go on the Elsa ride. So we went on the Elsa ride. Nice. And she was so cool about it. Like, we were all tired. And when we took our afternoon breaks, she was also tired. So she wasn't complaining about leaving the park and coming back. Mm -hmm. She was very well behaved. And I think the secret to doing Disney is to ignore every mommy blogger about Disney ever. Yeah. And just accept you're not going to get to do all the shit. And yes, it's expensive. This is yeah. this is a bougie thing. Like going to Disney is a bougie ass thing. Mm -hmm. Water is three fifty a bottle. <laughs> like if you bitch about water being three fifty a bottle while you're there, you're just going to ruin the time. Yeah. That you paid for to be there. Just pay the three fifty and drink your fucking water. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it was it was cool. And because our friends are season pass holders. They pretty much made all the plans, and I just followed around. Oh, which is that great. makes it so much nicer yeah. to not be the planner. Like more so, like yeah. I know how much you normally like to plan. So just to like kind of like, no, I'm not going to do that this time. <laughs> yeah, it and nice it was release. funny because I've met these friends once in person because they live in Florida and we don't anymore. And like, like I have a group chat with them and we talk and stuff, but. In person, John's friend and I haven't spent that much time together and no time together completely sober. And <laughs> we were standing in line for the Dumbo ride and he's like, dude, you have to calm down. You're wigging me out. I'm like, I am calm. My husband looks at him and goes, uh, yeah, this is her calm. And he's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I love my child. But when she is within arm's reach, this is the lowest I go. And you know this because you've known me for long enough and you've known me since before I had my kid. And when I'm with her, like when she's just out of the room, I just go to a level of chill I cannot occupy when she's there. Mm -hmm. I think that's true for most parents who have kids in that like tiny to elementary school age. Yeah. Unless yeah. we're like, unless we're like zoned out on the TV. But you know what? Actually, I take that back because even then I have a hard time relaxing because like when I'm on. Like, or, like, even if I'm watching TV with them, I think about the laundry mm -hmm. I should be doing or, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, you know, so it's hard. It's an exercise. I actually did it today. I, like, tried to sit down on the couch and just watch a, TV, a show with them. <laughs> and it was really hard. I was like, all right. And but. it's not, like, it doesn't matter if your kid is good or bad. I just got done saying, my child is very well behaved. I'm like, we're at fucking Disney World. If she had run away and we had lost her, Disney would know she was lost before we realized it. Mm -hmm. and and she would have found a cast member and they would have been like you're not lost you're right here your parents are lost we should probably go find them because <laughs> uh, that's what they do and it's fantastic nice yeah it's just it's that knowledge that like you are responsible for a tiny human mm -hmm. and if they randomly start spurting arterial blood you're you're the first line of defense or if there's a flying thing they're afraid of a or b honestly equal situations in the reaction yep. from them sometimes <laughs> true so but i did like i did finally chill out and relax um they took her on teacups without me which was fantastic because i got like 35 minutes to just chill in disney world by myself yeah. i went oh. to the bathroom alone the first time i went to the bathroom in disney world which is a gift, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah you it's hear just... me? I'm like, oh. <laughs> right? Can you imagine yeah. peeing by yourself? Yeah, and not like because your child hasn't discovered you, but like they are physically with two other adults doing a thing <laughs> that is keeping them from you. They are not even in line of sight. They don't know you're pissing right now. <laughs> it was the dream. Like, guys, whole, a dream is a wish your heart makes, and I wished to go pee alone and it happened in disney world so <laughs> hold on to that shit <laughs> you can get into the park until like 11 30 in the morning and it doesn't matter yeah 
and I understand if you've been saving for years and years and you've never been, you want to do everything, but the more you plan your day, the more it's going to suck. Like, yeah. We went on Haunted Mansion twice because we were there late and it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That might be so. more feasible, like, if it's just adults or if it's a small group, then you can plan more. But when there's a large group, yeah. I think it was the four adults and one kid thing. Yeah. Then it's like, let's mm-hmm. just go and enjoy the day and, and we'll get done when we can nap. get done. And by so, home, I mean to the hotel yeah. room. Do not leave Disney property because yep. you're not going to come back. Yep. I don't care what they say. It's 37 yeah. <laughs> miles to I drive. <laughs> it but it was also nice feels because like it. it was a group of adults that worked well together in a travel situation. And we've discussed many times how that is just a lovely thing. It is. Not all friends no. travel make good travel friends. Mm-hmm. Like you could be really good besties with somebody and then mm-hmm. just they travel completely differently yeah. than you. And it's like, okay, yeah. this isn't going to work. But no, it <laughs> so, was it was yeah. totally chill. And I was like easily the most neurotic of the group. And uh, I relaxed and had a really great time. We ended with a really good fancy breakfast. And we went, we spent the night in Savannah on the way back because we drove. And we literally just, we got dinner door dashed to us and we literally just crashed in the hotel for 14 hours and it was so glorious. It was the best thing ever. That's so great. So, anyway, all that said to say, yeah, had a wonderful vacation <laughs> and uh, that is my vice for this week is actually having a wonderful vacation. Yay. <laughs> Very cool. Which is awesome for people that have been listening to since the beginning, because you've been mm-hmm. waiting for this trip for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now it has finally happened. <laughs> so what about your, I so that's your vice, but what about your book? It. The Hobbit? <laughs> I'm getting a glare. <laughs> so we listened to The Lord of the Rings. And I don't know if you know this. <laughs> but the audio version book of the lord of the rings is two thousand hours long no it's like 20 it's like 22 it, no hours. it's not like just literally the fellowship of the ring not all of it <laughs> just the fellowship of the ring and Andy circus <laughs> does it and he does an amazing job he did the hobbit and i actually really enjoyed it but anyone who's read tolkien's work or is vaguely familiar with it knows that the hobbit and the fellowship of the ring are very very different books and I swear to God, like, yes. <laughs> it, mm, I'm trying to think of what I can say without my husband's head popping over the desk across from me and telling me I'm wrong. But by the time we were <laughs> six hours in, I'm pretty sure there hadn't been one sentence that was less than 15 words. And at one point in the trip, I was like falling <laughs> asleep. And then all of a sudden, like, one of the fucking hobbits is taking a bath and it's, it's, the one he reads in a high Irish accent, I think it's Pippin. And of course, because it's Tolkien who thinks he can write songs, it's a it's a song about taking a bath in a high pitched Irish accent out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> and I'm just like ah! <laughs> So my real book for this week, Ruby Dixon came out with another short read, The Half Orcs Maiden Bread, which one of the things I love about Ruby Dixon, aside from like mm-hmm. the vibrating blue alien dicks, is she makes every woman she writes about unique and well fleshed out. So like in this one, she was a tall 30 year old spinster and a bigger woman. And none of the fine based lords around where they lived wanted her. And her dad basically sold her to this half orc dude who was trying to make orcs be more respectable instead of just you know, tribes of monsters, and he was doing a pretty good job, but he needed a wife with a title to add legitimacy to his claim. And she does that. And she likes, like, despite being tall and having broad hips and broad shoulders, like, she likes doing womanly things. When she saw that the keep, which he had fairly purchased, he didn't, like, grade it or anything, um, had fallen into disrepair, she gets excited Mm -hmm. because she felt needed and she's a homebody so those kinds of things bring her joy and like when she notices even though he's wearing human sized tunics that they don't fit parts of him very well she alters them with her needle and thread and it was really cool because like 
Ruby Dixon doesn't shy away from writing women as women. And she writes a broad spectrum of women, and I always enjoy reading it. And so it was just a sweet, quick little read, little political intrigue, little, little, little bit dirty stuff with a half orc guy. Yeah, he's green, but it was dark, so it doesn't matter. And then I don't know <laughs> if we've talked about this, but Kate Pryor, it's probably not her real name, is an author that has one book on Amazon, and it's called Love, Laugh, Lich. And it is really good. It's a trashy monster romance novel. Uh, the apocalypse has happened, and the world mm -hmm. has been taken over by the Lich King, Death Incarnate, whatever you want to call him. But you know, corporate America still got to run. So she still works in a cubicle and uh, she ends up. Yeah. Yeah. She's like his personal assistant <laughs> and she ends up falling in love with him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious. And, okay. and it's well written in that for a short story, it does not overly flesh out things. It doesn't try to be more than it is. It is succinct. It is amusing. It is just well balanced like a really well made flat white like nice sweet bitter creamier than you expected <laughs> you know good so yeah. if you're looking for like a full amount of reading those two together would would be a novel but they're they're really good and they're really short and if you like monster romance or just weird short romance novels that are kind of amusing i would definitely go for it so what's your book this week? <laughs> um, so I actually, I finished Hounded, uh, the Kevin Hearn book, the mm -hmm. first book of the Iron Druid series. And then I just kind of Hell yeah. devoured the next two over the course of like a week. I just kind of like eight two books instead of one which no it's I mean, not but i'm it's excited not normal for me so i'm i'm like <laughs> i'm like did i just have a lot of laundry to do because like i'm like i don't <laughs> like more than usual <laughs> like like i was looking for reasons to like escape nice. and do chores so i could listen to my nice. books <laughs> just like, yeah but uh yeah, so the next two books are Hexed and Hammered. And what I really like about this series is that each book has, like, a very um, distinct tie-in to, like, different mythologies. So, like, Hexed is, has to do with, like, witches, as you might expect. And then oh, they bring in the Bakkens. That's not really, like, one of our yeah, common overused and it's, it's like, things. Nice. No. Not at all. And, like, the Bakkens are, like, in his book, spoiler alert, um, they're set up as, like, this um, this coven of witches that are coming in trying to, or no, how does it, it's okay, what happens on, when you eat some of the details, but I don't know, they're oh, either. Shit. It's what happens when exactly. you read three books in a weekly. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, what, what was. What happens. <laughs> I know, but, um, so yeah, but anyway, there's this whole scene where they're at a nightclub and then like he gets somebody to go take care of them and there's lots of blood and then like he ends up fighting, like there's these two police officers that try to arrest him because he's carrying a That's baseball kind of bat fair. and a sword. That's kind of uh, fair. <laughs> Yeah, to be, it's totally fair. But what he does is he ends up camouflaging his instruments of death. And then they're like, where the fuck did they go? And then, like, they're fighting with him. And then he just starts binding the skin of one cop's hand to the other cop's face. And so, like, they end up, like, fist Sounds fighting like a each very other. good D&D &D campaign, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you right now. Sounds like... You can always tell yeah. fantasy authors that have played Dungeons and Dragons because you're like, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then in Hammered, so in the next one, he actually as runs one into does. Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, as one does, and they go and have a beer. <laughs> and then he tries to get him to not go and go on this quest because... Of future implications, which we're finding out in the next in the next installment of the series. So it's that's amazing, hilarious, and funny, and entertaining, and all over I the love fucking it when spectrum. A little bit so I'm of loving everything, them. and it's like properly irreverent towards 
every belief system. Like, yeah, we're going to throw your Norse gods in here, but also, yeah. Jesus is a coarse light man. Who knew? Yep. <laughs> Who knew? That sounds really good. <laughs> oh, man. It is really cool. I actually started watching Jane the Virgin on Netflix. There's like five seasons of it, and we just start, we're, we're on season two, but it's, it's really, it's, it's good, funny. It's, it's kind of stylized after, um, okay. a Spanish that novella. Makes sense. And yeah, yeah, which I, I love some of the Spanish novellas. Mm-hmm. I've watched a, a few of them. <laughs> thanks to my husband but um you know so this is like a netflix comedy just thing and she's artificially inseminated accidentally because the yeah so she's going in for a pap smear and then the doctor's wife she walked in on her wife cheating on her so the doctor goes into work all like flustered and pissed off and depressed and blah 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 and so the nurse was like, okay, so you have a pap in room seven and then insemination in eight. And then she mixes them up. And so she goes in and inseminates <laughs> Jane. And so she's a virgin. And then she ends up pregnant. Does so, she get to keep the baby? Yeah. And there's like a love triangle. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Although that is There's kind of so one of the, legal, the plot threads at one point. Ramifications to that, not the least of which being how do you confuse a turkey baster with really Satan's Q tip? How? Um yeah, yeah. Satan's <laughs> Q tip, yes. Holy shit, that is perfect. Your cervix knows exactly Satan's what I mean. Q tip. Jesus. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. Totally unrelated. <sighs> I was at the pharmacy today. And they were like, ma'am, we see here that you have not had an HPV vaccine. And I just looked at her, this beautiful, young, 20-something. And I'm like, I am very old and monogamous. I think I'm good. (laughs) I think it came out. Okay, so this is going to totally date us. But I think when it came out, we were already too old to get it. Like, they don't let us have it because we're too fucking old to get it. So even if we wanted to get that vaccine, we wouldn't qualify to. But it's to, very sweet because so, my birth date you is know. in front of her. And the, yeah, like, it's a 198 yes. are the first three digits of the year I was born. And she's just <laughs> like, do you need an HPV vaccine? And I'm just like, like, it took me a minute because I was like, what? No. Thank you. But no, yeah. it was like weird the question. weirdest, why are you carding <laughs> me for my wine? I'm not wearing makeup moment, but like <laughs> for cervical yes. viruses. It was strange. <laughs> anyway, I think we're done. <laughs> you can, we sh- yes. Yeah. I think we should wrap it up if on that. If you are under Definitely. 26, <laughs> get your HPV vaccine. Um, you can find us everywhere online at Paper and Vices patreon <laughs> just the internet instagram twitter the book face not tiktok because i don't want to learn a new thing because again old old um <laughs> do we have to eventually know? we'll get there <laughs> i just learned how to animate graphics on instagram like we're not necessarily yeah yeah we just yeah <laughs> you can email us Lee at paperandvices.com, Victoria at paperandvices.com. Uh, we would love to know what you are reading, anything you would like us to read. <laughs> In the meantime, don't be an asshole, smoke a joint, and take care of yourself. This has been a production of Paper and Vices LLC. Copyright 2022. This episode is presented for entertainment purposes only, and any advice should only be pursued within the legal boundaries, common sense, and personal responsibility of each person. Please check your local laws and do not engage in any form of bitchassery. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and guests only, and do not in any way represent the views of Paper and Vices LLC, nor any named persons, nor should they be considered personal, medical, or legal advice. Previous episodes and other commentary can be found at paperandvices.com and patreon.com slash paperandvices.